Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening today. Okay. Hi, guys. Doing a little sharpening today. Uh, I've got a tripod now, so that's exciting. Um, so I tend to sharpen once a week. For me, that's every 10 to 15 spoons. Um, and I use automotive grit sandpaper wrapped around a wooden block. And I start with 400 grit. And then I work my way up through the grits about doubling every time to 400, 800, 1500, 3000. Um, so I get uh, just a mix pack from Amazon of, it's called automotive grit sandpaper. Um, and that's what gets you up to the 3000 and a mix pack is like 12 bucks. So it's very affordable. I keep everything in my little toolbox here. So my toolbox, it's wood. So if I bash a knife blade on it, it doesn't hurt it. And then right here in the bottom of the toolbox, I keep my burnishing tools, but I also keep some sandpaper, a wooden block, and a wooden dowel. So we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so this is just a piece of 2x4 from my kids' building blocks. It's relatively smooth and doesn't have any uh, roughness on it, although it's not, it hasn't been sanded or anything like that. And the trick I've found is to sharpen on this narrow face so that um, I can be very sure that my fingers aren't sticking up above. If I, if I was sharpening here, then it would be easier for my hand to be sticking up above. So it's really important that you grow, pull it tight like this and that your fingers are down below the surface and that way you won't actually cut your hand when you do this. Um, so here's what the basic stroke looks like, uh, 106 Mora, get your elbow into your side to hold this steady or rest it on your knee. And then, uh, in this way, you can see how the, the handle is pointed in the direction that I want to pull. And I can tell when I have rocked forward on that bevel. In fact, I can look at it and see it. Um, and so then I just pull it towards me, going from heel to tip. And as I get to the tip, you want to kind of um, almost lift up slightly because with the curve of the tip of the blade, um, you need to lift up in order to keep that edge fully engaged on the bevel. If you guys have any questions during this, feel free to chime in. Um, and then going away from myself because I can't see, hold on, big truck going by. Logging truck. Uh, because I can't see the, uh, I do a video taking a green tree limb and how I use the axe to cut a limb down to a spoon blank. Sure, I'd be happy to do that sometime. Um, because when you're going away from yourself, you can't see if that edge is engaged properly, what I do instead is uh, I make sure my finger is actually on the bevel. Not back here on the spine, but on the bevel itself, and that way I'm rocked forward on it. Um, and I can feel what it engages. And similarly, as before, when I get to the part where the blade is curved up towards the tip, I have to kind of mm, engage it a little bit and almost, uh, it's almost like sort of lifting the back of the heel of my hand just slightly. Did I already mention what sandpaper grits I use? I start with 400 grit and I then double it to 800, 1500, 3000. It's not super crucial, uh, you know, whether you double it specifically or, or not, um, but that seems to be the most efficient thing. If, if I only have 600, because I used up all the 400 in the mix pack, then I'll use 600. Um, I do try and make sure I end with 3,000. So, hi from Turkey. All right, I'm going to try and read you guys' comments because I have started uploading these to YouTube. I haven't found a way to have a video of this length end up in my highlights reel. Um, it could be I'm just doing something wrong, but I, I'm not figuring out how to do that. So what I have figured out how to do is to upload them to my <laughs> fledgling YouTube channel. Um, but it doesn't show your comments. So I will be reading your comments so that people who watch that will know what I'm talking about. So I basically keeping keeping my hands still by resting on my either on my leg or just tucking it into my chest here. And go back and forth like this. Now, 
go slow until you know what the feeling is of properly engaging that edge all the way. A lot of times people will drop their hand at this stage and actually lift it the tip a little bit so they're not actually engaging that edge. So you have to go slow and really watch that you're doing exactly what you think you're doing every step of the way until until this just becomes your muscle memory and you can just do this while doing something else like reading comments. Um, so it's just back and forth like this. When I'm coming towards me, my thumb is not on the blade because it doesn't have to be. And when I'm going away from myself, the thumb, the my forefinger is on that sloyd bevel, um, specifically so that I can feel when it is properly rocked down. If you misjudge that and your finger is back here on the edge, then you won't actually contact. The edge will be lifted up like that. You see. So what you want is your finger to be up forward so that it's rocked down just like that. So, and I'm pulling this sandpaper fairly tight, but there is a gap. Um, it, that doesn't matter quite so much. Um, so let's talk about edges in general for a second. Because uh, the most important thing when sharpening is to understand if you've gone far enough with this lowest grit. When do you know to move to the next grit? Excellent question. So you have to make sure you go far enough with the lowest grit um, to remove whatever tiny little secondary bevel might be at the edge, or there's no point in going up to the next grit. Um, so you have to stay with this lowest grit until your point is a true point again and doesn't have any little rounded bit still at the edge. Because if you can imagine, you're taking off a little bit from this side. Hi, Tom. Taking off a little bit from this side. Um, and if you don't take that far enough, you will have gotten close to eliminating that little rounded bit at the tip, but you won't actually have eliminated it. And so when you go up to your next higher grits, it's just it's cutting so much less that, uh, sure, if you stayed on it for twice as long, you could then eliminate it, but you won't be able to... Uh, just swiftly move through the grits because the whole point of moving through the, the grits, um, the higher grits, is just to refine the scratch pattern with a, a smoother and smoother scratch pattern. So for each of the other grits, it only takes 10 or 15 strokes per side. Um, but for that lowest grit, really what you're looking for is to make sure that the edge geometry is correct. If the edge geometry isn't correct, there's no point in moving to a higher grit. So what do I mean when I say the edge geometry is correct? What I mean is that you have that true sloyd bevel where it is a point, it is two sides coming to a perfect point, and that there is no little rounded bit. Now, the easiest way to tell the rounded bit, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that here, is when you're looking at your blade and you sort of wiggle it back and forth in a flash of light. If you have a rounded edge, you will see it as a flash of light um, right here at the very, very edge. It'll be super thin, like so thin I can't actually show you. Um, and it will happen when the rest of the bevel is in shadow. This will catch the light at just the right moment, and you'll be able to see this thin strip of light while the rest of the bevel is in shadow. That tells you that you haven't gone far enough. Your bevel should be either fully in light or fully in shadow, um, not one or the other. Now, when you get a fresh Mora blade, because the fresh Mora blade is actually um, hollow ground, which means it's a slight concave grind when you first are sharpening it with sandpaper you're not going to hit the inside of this bevel you're going to sort of hit a track right at the edge and you're going to hit a track back here but that inside is not going to be uh, on the same plane as your edge and your back bit back here so don't be fooled by that when uh, you are very first sharpening your knife and you can still see the little factory track marks on the edge, you will see a secondary bevel, but it'll be one that you created because your very first time uh, sharpening with sandpaper, you're going to create uh, sort of a flat bevel. And until that flat bevel is pushed down all the w and removed all of that concavity created by the hollow grinding, um, you will see this thing that will might fool you into thinking that you have a secondary bevel, but you don't. Um, the secondary bevel comes from, uh, from use, uh, comes from if you uh, are doing a lot of twisting with your knife tip, as you do on the shoulders of a blade. Um, and in general, 
your secondary bevel, uh, you know, you'll you go, you'll see it, and it won't be all along the entire length of the blade. A lot of times, you'll see a secondary bevel from here on up, because that gets probably twice as much use when you're carving. Um, and you might also see a secondary bevel if you aren't engaging the tip properly. Remember how I said you had to sort of mm, lean into that tip and maybe lift your palm just the tiniest little bit and make sure that you're engaged, particularly as you're going away from yourself. You want to just lean into it so make sure that that edge is fully engaged. If you aren't doing that, then you'll see that the tip is not on the same plane as the rest of the blade. So you want to stick with that lowest grit, the, the 400 grit or whatever your lowest grit is. Really going below 400 isn't worth it. Uh, it starts to sort of chatter around a little bit too much. Um, but you want to stick with that lowest grit. Now, as I, as I make these motions and I'm going towards the edge every time, and that way I'm not creating a, a wire edge, the wire, the metal's getting removed away from the edge. So I'm essentially making a cutting motion with the knife and I'm leading with the handle. So you can see I'm leading with the handle in this way. Happy President's Day to you too. And then I'm, uh, leading with the handle this way coming towards me. So it's always the handle is pointing in the direction that it's going to be going. Um, so, if you have a, a nick or a chip in your blade, you want to do this with the lowest grit until it is completely gone. Um, now, if you're careful with your blades, the, the most common reason for having a, a nick in your blade is because you didn't have the discipline of completely sheathing your knife every single time you put it down. You got in the habit of putting it out on the table, or you laid it out next to your other knife, and then you knocked the handle and it spun around, and the edge struck something metal. And before you know it, you have a little nick in your blade. Um, if that sounds like you, raise your hand. Um, so, uh, you want to make sure that you stick with that lowest grit until it is completely... Mm, my sandpaper is done. Until it is completely... There we go. Until it's completely good. Until the edge geometry is perfect. And that's when you move on to the next grit. The next grit, everything is the same, except that instead of working to get the edge geometry correct, I'm just going until all the scratches are refined to this new, finer scratch pattern. Usually that takes 10 to 15 strokes. Honestly, I don't really look at it because I found that for the quality of surface that I'm going for, and admittedly, I go for a less perfect surface than many carvers. There are some carvers out there that have an insane finish. Um, and I'm looking for something that will give me a good finish that cuts easily. Um, but for aesthetic reasons, I'm, I want a spoon that isn't going to intimidate people into not using it, um, which I already struggle with. I have people who get spoons and then think that they're too pretty to use. So, um, Okay, so that's your 800 grit, and now 1500 or 2000 or whatever works for you. Let's find it in here. 1500. And again, I'm wrapping the sandpaper around the blocks such that I can use my palm and my fingers to pull it tight like this. Just like that, and then my fingers are nicely down below the edge. You want to make sure your fingers aren't sticking up because you will slice them off. Um, so, just like that, and you can hear the difference in sound, and the action is really getting a lot smoother. Now, one of the reasons I like these this style knife handle that Matt White makes is the facets on either side of the handle give you a subconscious tactile cue for when you are in the proper uh, proper orientation because it's the same every single time because there's your finger just hits this facet and then it feels the same every single time whereas with a rounded more a handle depending on where your thumb is hitting the handle it can feel different and so you have to use your eyeballs instead of getting the tactile cue from the the feel of the knife that you're right where you want to be um, you can achieve this same thing by carving down the handle of your Mora blade, putting at least one facet on either side, um, and that will it won't help with some of the other issues with the handle, but it will help with this, um, with giving you that tactile cue. So again, I'm going towards the blade as though I was trying to cut the sandpaper, and I'm making sure that my 
edge is flat on that sandpaper the entire time. I have to pay particular attention as I get to the tip. I do not sharpen every day. Um, I carve almost every day, but I sharpen once a week, um, which amounts to probably 10 to 15 spoons. Uh, really, I did so many blanks this last week that I, I don't need to sharpen this week, but um, if you're carving wood that is not rock hard and doesn't have lots of grit cells in it or lots of knots, there's no reason why your blade should need to be sharpened with every spoon. Um, you know, the metal is much, much harder than the wood is, and it should be able to last quite a long time. Uh, with no stropping or anything like that. So that was 1500. Now I'm going to do the 3000 and then I'm going to be done. Like I said, I don't strop um, largely because uh, I, I used to strop using just the plain wooden block with uh, some metal polish on it, but it was messy. And uh, so I decided to see what it would happen if I just didn't do it. And I liked the results. So I don't do it. That's not to say that um, you know a strop like Tom Scandian's strop isn't an excellent choice for somebody, uh, but this is also an option. Um, so again, this is the 3000, and I'm going towards the edge. I'm leading with the end of the handle, because if you don't lead with the end of the handle, if you're just sort of pushing it like this, uh, it's hard to get the flow of getting it to go from this corner to this corner over the course of the knife from the from the heel to the tip. Um, so leading with the handle allows you to sort of judge that curve that you're making a little bit better. Uh, to a knife with a large bevel, did I change geometry with sandpaper or a rougher stone? Yeah, that's a good question. So this Mora, the bevel got uh, widened when I pushed down the bevel to re-flatten it. Um, with a coarse diamond plate, and I wasn't as careful as I should have been, um, and uh, I ended up making these bevels wider. So it's uh, a, a more acute edge than uh, your typical Mora edge, but uh, I actually really love it. I find that it is aggressive and easy to carve with, um, and uh, uh, I would do it again. Actually, if I had a if I had a knife that was my main carver, I would try doing this. Lay it back just a little bit so that the you know the, the bevel you can see the bevel there is quite wide on that side. So um, some people have voiced concerns that that more steel doesn't hold up to that and it would crumble. And I haven't had any problems with this knife. This is my main knife that I carve almost all my spoons with, start to finish. For a while, I was keeping a knife that was a finishing blade, but now I mostly just use this knife because it's easier on my hands. Um, and when I do use, um, when I do use a regular Mora with a regular bevel, it feels fat <laughs> and slow, sluggish to me. Um, so try it out. Um, okay, so now here's the 3000 grit. And voila. That's my edge, fresh for the week. Um, and I like this sandpaper method because it's cheap, it's portable, it lives right here in my kit. I never have any reason to not do it. And um, and it works really well for me. So now I'm gonna do the hook knife. Yeah, I'll hold it up one more time for you. Man. Um, all right, that's what it looks like on one side, and then on this side it got ground down even further. Uh, somebody, said that uh, they thought possibly how that happened was that the, the soft steel that sandwiches the harder steel in the middle gave way a little easier. And because I wasn't paying attention, it sort of laid the bevel down towards the soft steel, which makes total sense. Um, either way, a happy accident. So, uh, some other time I'll do... Yeah, I don't have it with me. Some other time I'll do a video on sharpening... Uh, a hook knife with the bevel on the outside. It's much like doing um, a mora in that uh, in that you are sharpening that outside bevel, and then at the end of the process, you're removing the wire edge from the inside curve with the sandpaper wrapped around this. But you're using the the square block with the sandpaper, 
and and for for hook knives, all everything I said about um, getting the edge geometry correct holds true as well. What I say about brand style of sandpaper, it's just uh, whatever Amazon sells. This is electro coated abrasive paper from Lanhu. I don't know. It's whatever Amazon wants to sell you when you type in automotive sandpaper mix pack from 400 grit to 3000. Um, so what I said about edge geometry holds true here in that, you know, you want to make sure that you have no nicks in your blade. Um, and again, if you're covering your blades religiously, every time you put them down, that will drastically reduce the number of nicks that you have. Um, and then you want to use that lowest grit until all your nicks are gone or until, uh, you no longer see a secondary bevel. Now, uh, I use the Monadnock hook. Uh, sorry, Emmett, cut out the first bit. Uh, yeah, I sharpen on, uh, I sharpen on a little chunk of two by four and I use the narrow edge so that I can pull the sandpaper down the sides and keep my fingers well down away from that edge. It might be tempting to use the wider side, but because, um, because I'm holding it in my hand and I'm not clamping it on something, uh, it's just much easier to have my fingers stick up over the edge and I would slice my fingers. So by using the narrow side, it works great. I can pull the sandpaper down low enough that my fingers stay away from that top edge. Um, and it's just a chunk of two by four. Um, similarly, this is a, uh, just a chunk of pine dowel. Um, it's fairly fat, which I like, I'll get into that in a minute, but where you're looking for that, uh, secondary bevel flash on, uh, on knives that have the main bevel where you, where you hook knives with the main bevel, where you're sharpening them on the square block, you're looking for that secondary bevel flash on the outside, which is where the main bevel is. For these knives that have the two tracks, you're looking for that secondary bevel flash right here on the edge of the cutting edge, but on the inside. Um, and you can see that. So it's the same deal. You got to keep going until that secondary bevel is no longer around. Now, you don't always have to go back to the 400 grit. You can start, what is this? This is 1500 grit. I'm going to start with 1500 grit because you know what? I didn't carve that many spoons. I don't have any damage. I'm looking and I don't see any secondary bevel damage. So I'm just going to do the 1500 grit, a couple strokes and the 3000 grit. So you got to use your brain to think about, um, you know, how much, uh, damage did I do? And, uh, and you know, what's going to get my blade back to sharp. You don't have to go back to the 400 grit. Um, so I roll it around the, uh, dowel tightly. One of the nice things about using the same sandpaper for the dowel that I do for the wooden block is that the wooden block is very hard to use this little bit right at the end of the sandpaper. And that's exactly what you are using with the dowel. So it works out perfectly. So, uh, again, I hold the hook knife, uh, probably flat on my hand on my leg like this. So it's, it's nice and still. And then the thing I like about these wider bits is that I can hold it like this essentially. And I'm just going to twist it like this. If it was a thinner dowel, uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I'd have to hold it back further. Um, that would be harder to do with one hand. So having a mobile kit like this where I can take it wherever I go, um, basically I'm just twisting and I'm being careful to make sure that I keep the sandpaper engaged on both tracks. And so you just have to pay attention and make sure that you aren't lifting it either one way or the other. This would be more disastrous towards the edge because then you'd be rounding off the edge. Back here it just means you wouldn't, if you tilted it this way, it just means you wouldn't be touching that actual edge. Um, but either way, I'm sort of twisting and I'm going this direction just a little bit, but not much. Doing mostly uh, a twist to make sure that I hit every part of the blade. Now, as with the Mora, I'm probably doing the bulk of my cutting with this top bit here. So I want to make sure that I actually hit that quite nicely. So it doesn't have to be that slow. Once you got a feel for it, I don't know, and 15 times. Again, there's no hiding from the fact that sharp is sharp. It is a, it is a, it is an incontrovertible fact. No amount of theory will change the fact of whether or not you have made your blade sharp or not. So just understanding what sharp actually means, the edge geometry of it, that it's coming to a true point and there's no secondary bevel there, that's what you need to know. 
Um, so in this case, if you imagine the plane from this back track and the front edge that I've created, and then the plane created by this little bevel right here, that's my true sharp point. And as long as I'm not seeing a secondary bevel at the edge here when it flashes in the light, then uh, I know that I've got a true a true uh, bevel that goes all the way out to the edge and it will be sharp. Um, okay, so I do that and then I do the 3000. Sometimes if I run out of 3000, I do 2500 because they give you that in the mix pack too. Uh, let's see where you rest the blade on a hard surface to ensure the paper is making contact with both rails. Yeah, and that's a great thing if you you know if you've got a, a workbench um, or a way to clamp you know a piece of wood down or a, a way to clamp the handle within a vise. That's awesome, and then you can use both hands. This is how I do it, where I'm just um, you know it's just me out here, uh, and as long as I put it on my knee and I hold it down with my hand, I can I can feel when I'm engaged on both. Rails. One of the nice things about Matt's knives is they are the, uh, the extra bit of width that they have. You might look at them and think, gosh, they're just a little bit wider than, say, a Robin Wood knife. Um, well, number one, it doesn't matter that they're wider because he does such a great job of putting a curve to the underside. So as they're cutting through the wood, that curve is just matching the curve of the spoon that you're doing very nicely. But number two, that extra bit of width is key it really helps you feel when you are flat on those two rails, when you are equal on those two rails. And again, the this wider dowel, and this dowel is, I don't know, an inch and a quarter, but you could go even wider. Um, really, it just needs to be, it needs to be uh, less than whatever the diameter of the hook knife is. So I could have a wider dowel and that would be totally fine. Um, the wider the dowel is, the easier it is to hold in your hand this way. And voila. Okay, now because I've been pushing away from the edge as I do this, right? I'm pushing this way essentially. There, depending on how much sharpening I've done, there isn't in this case because I've done almost no sharpening. Um, there could be a little wire edge right on this edge here. So then what I do. Um, is I just sight down it so I can see where that little secondary bevel is and I just whoop, all I'm trying to do is knock it off I don't have to do more than that uh, you saw Western sharpening by pulling away do I ever sharpen that way you saw uh, Westerman sharpening by pulling away um, yeah you know everybody has their own systems uh, I this is how I do it because it's what makes sense intuitively to me and it's easy to do in my lap um, but really uh, the only thing that matters is is it sharp and so if it's sharp uh, that means the edge geometry is doing what you think it's doing um, then nothing else really matters um, so that's it that's that's what I do I, I do the same thing on the inside and then I do that on the outside and I only do the outside with the 3000 at the very end there's no point in knocking off the wire edge that's created by all the different grits. You just wait until the end. Um, you know, I'm a lefty too. Um, so I don't know, you know, I think Nick comes up with the way that works for him and he, he sharpens way more tools than I do. Um, but, uh, but this works and it works lovely. Um, and uh, what else? Any other further questions, guys? Um, like I said, I used to use metal polish on these just uh, with nothing wrapped around them as a final go but you know then you have to wipe it off your hands and you do have metal dust on your hands at the end of this um, so I just decided not to do it and it turns out it works great um, like I said I'm gonna be uploading this to the YouTube channel and uh, I hope you guys found this uh, useful and just to make sure everyone knows uh, we're starting a Spoonosaurus magazine. Hopefully going to have the first free issue out to hand out at Greenwood Fest this year. Um, and then the first real issue um, out uh, in September is my thinking. Um, and so, uh, yeah, of course. Um, 
why did I stop stropping? Um, I stopped stropping because I thought, is this really necessary? What are what does the blade do if I don't strop? And it turns out the blade did just fine. Um, is metal dust harmful indoors? Not the amount that I'm using here. Um, I've never felt like a lot accumulated. Usually it's just on your fingers and you want to wash it off because it will stain. If you go right from this to carving without washing your hands, you'll see it on the wood. Um, great. Any further questions? I'll, uh, I'll upload this to YouTube. Thanks, guys.